Admiral's log. We have the Austro-Hungarian Empire where we want them. In a vulnerable state with all their capital ships isolated. There are just one light cruiser and one destroyer remaining to be sunk. Aside from that, there are a few heavy cruisers and several battleships and battle cruisers. While their capital ships can still project power, they are easier to isolate and eliminate. I have ordered refits to our heavy cruisers to make them more effective against the remaining Austro-Hungarian capital ships. The Austro-Hungarian Empire does continue to impress me with their ability to crank out more and more merchant ships. We continue to hit them hard, yet they keep sending out more and more to keep their economy afloat. Their ability to hit our merchant fleet in return has been dwindling. Their battleships and battlecruisers simply aren't very well suited for merchant raiding. Our ships are far better equipped to do that. There are also rumors that the Austro-Hungarian morale is an all-time low. If we can keep winning battles, they might sue for peace very soon. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome back to episode 13 and for the first time in all these episodes we're going to see the sisters operating together. It's the Ferrari and the Regina against the battlecruiser Dromedar, um, our Tusa class battlecruiser displacing 46,000 tons, it's quite a bit more than I do, and they carry 15 inch guns, they get a total of 8 of those. Now I have a total of 18 18 inch guns between the two ships. With my 18 inch guns and the. Well, I'm still firing semi or piercing. It's not ideal, um, but it might be sufficient to deal with the Dromedar. We'll, we'll just have to see. If not, I can always fling loads and loads and loads of high explosive. Ideally, maintain broadside position and ideally also spot them before they spot me. Enemy to the east, that's where we're gonna go. The sisters together, one's trained crew and the other's also a trained crew, this is even better. This however, the Regina, has a 0.3 accuracy bonus versus 6.7 for the Ferrari. It means they not only fire more accurately, they also fire faster, uh, they take less time to get their aim right, and on top of everything, their damage control is better, so that even if they do take a hit, it's not going to be as disastrous. Oh really? The battlecruiser fired one shot, immediately hit the Regina. That's uh, unfortunate. The enemy fleet still has way too many capital ships for my liking, so I love to take this thing down, and I really am very happy to find it isolated. Although, to be fair, there weren't that many companions for this ship. The ship is pretty much without friends. Sure, it has a heavy cruiser as an escort. Yes, but... Um, destroyers, oh, that's not great. Destroyers and light cruisers were particularly hard to find. Regina took a bit more damage than I was hoping for. Come on. It's going to be another hit. Flooding. Let's have another closer look on this battle cruiser. It is able to bring all of its forward facing firepower to bear. Uh, it's one of those massive gun platforms of theirs, carrying a lot of 4-inch, one double seven incher and a few 8-inchers, but not nearly as many as their battleship counterparts. Now, ideally, I would not take too much damage in this encounter, because I need both battlecruisers alive and in the fight to project power against the enemy. In my current condition, I need all the power projection I can get, and... I'm pretty much guaranteed that was a couple of really good hits. That my battle cruisers are the biggest contributors. Um, the heavy cruisers don't project that much power. The light cruisers even less. And the destroyers are laughable. Come on. There you go. More partial pens. We are getting some decent damage in on this ship. Which in return means their accuracy will drop... Their damage and stability becomes greater and greater. Their components take more and more damage. And ideally, she just sinks rather quickly. Regina, 7.5% chance to hit. There we go, though. Flooding. She is completely outgunned. 
Which is exactly what I would like. Uh oh. I was thinking that was going to leave a nasty mark on the Regina. Because the Regina is operating fairly broadside. Yeah. Her Citadel is very difficult to pen. But Bow and Stern are fair game. In return, Dromadar, 67% chance to pen. That's pretty impressive with semi-armor piercing shells. Which, by the way, I'm considering just swapping out because the semi-armor piercing shells, well, they work against the battlecruiser. They've proven themselves in that sense. But when it comes to dealing with battleships, I doubt they'll be as effective. I really don't expect them to be as useful there, because the battleships are far more heavily protected. I mean, Dromedar has a maximum of 8 inches of armor on the main belt, not counting the turrets. And Bao is very poorly protected, aft is unprotected, fore deck is gone, aft deck is gone, superstructure is gone. It's a complete glass cannon, these things. So, by that... Well, maybe I can actually just destroy this thing with high explosive. Because I am hitting them mostly on four deck, four deck, main deck. See, the main deck is a bit more heavily protected. Two and a half inches. Uh, plus 108, so let's be generous and give it five inches of armor just to round it. At 13 kilometer range, with high explosive, I can pen about 12 and a half inches of armor... So, high explosive against the main deck should be feasible. Against the bow, it should just completely go right through. If it hits. Which is not yet a given. Ah, we're getting partial pens. Sure, we're setting some fires, but the fire damage has really not contributed that much. I'm going to give it two more salvos or so, but I think semi-armor piercing is just the better way to go here. Yeah, it's just a lot of partial pens. No. No, 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 no. We're going to switch back to armor piercing. High explosive is not quite cutting it. So if this hits... Uh, another overpen. Uh, Ferrari. Why are you going so fast? Because you're presenting yourselves as one big target right now. Not exactly a good move. Oh, they're flooding badly. Three engines out. They've lost 22% of their green level crew. Damage to one of their main guns. Yeah, these guys are so toast. Actually, Ferrari, I have a new tasking for you. We still need to sink a convoy. Uh, we're going to go to full ahead flank. I know it's going to come at some cost to my accuracy, but I'm willing to accept that cost. I just need the battlecruiser out of the way. Uh, we're going to mostly ignore... Holy crap, that was a lot of damage. Mostly ignore the heavy cruiser. Maybe cripple it, so that we can revisit it later. And once we have that accomplished, we can just speed towards the convoy and cripple that. Anyway, um, very swiftly the Dromedar was dealt with. There she goes. Extremely heavily damaged. Look at that. And this is all 18 inch, because the 4 inchers never got into range. Here's the Kaiser Karl, which has just torpedoed the Ferrari. That's not cool, sir. Slow. Ferrari's going at flank speed. I'm going to have to tell the Regina to also turn, but she doesn't really want to do that. Uh, I'm going to tell the Regina to slow the fuck down. No, not like that. Stupid bug. For those of you who don't know, there is a bug going on. Ships that have the uh, command avoid turned off, and if you then hit reverse, they just insta-stop like this. They just, like they're frozen. It's a bug, it's not a feature, this is not how the game is supposed to use these ships. And if you release this button, it makes the ship go again, after a freeze of a second or so. It's an extremely cheesy way of getting your uh, torpedo dodging to an entirely next level. And it's not something I really want to use. Ferrari's going to turn that way. Regina is still trying to slow her ass down. And I'm really hoping she's not going to stop right in the middle of those torpedoes. Come on, people. We need to get a salvo in on the Kaiser Carl. I 
don't trust this very much. I don't trust this very much at all. There we go. Overpen. Uh, pick your own ammo. Because maybe high explosive is better here. Also, I'm getting my battle cruisers far too close to this heavy cruiser. Which has been known to spam torpedoes. Exactly that. Fortunately, Regina is in a turn, so should be safe. The problem is, this is probably going to make the cruiser die. It's going to kill the cruiser, and I don't really want it to. But at the same time, I cannot sustain too much damage to my battle cruisers because I need them alive as well. See, in this case, with a heavy cruiser, these pens do 1300 damage. I'm thinking if you get. Holy shit. If you get shells which are too good, which have too much pen, then they just fly right in one side and fly right out the other. And that's something else that I do not really want. Anyway, nice amount of victory points. Two heavy command ships down. Uh, sorry, capital ships. One BC and one CA. CA is not a capital ship in my book. Uh, oh, peace treaty. No, I'm going to fight to the end. Not knowing exactly what that end is going to be. But the Austro-Hungarians are down to 16 ships. Although, in retrospect, maybe I should actually have agreed to that peace treaty. Because I am not too confident about my ability to break this blockade. Uh, please tell me you got the better shells. Cap shells. Perfect. Thank you. I'm checking that because previously... Oh, you already launched your troops. Okay, don't launch yours. I'm checking that because previously the uh, Maria Teresa um, belonged to a class that had pretty poor abilities to damage enemy cruisers. So I'm checking if she got the upgrade. Because even though I don't have that many ships, I don't keep track of every single metric. At least not by heart. I don't know all these things. Come on. Partial pens. They've taken a serious interest in my destroyer. I doubt I can pen this, though. In this angle with AP? Oh, never mind. I can't even hit it anyway. They are coming to starboard. Which is pretty good news for these torps. How much are you coming to starboard? You're making yourself a pretty tempting AP target there. These torpedoes on the heavy cruisers have not yet been upgraded. So there's still the, um, the oxygen fields. Oxygens. Uh, the heavy cruisers, two of my heavy cruisers are being adjusted. And will be out of service for a while. Oh, they detected the torps. Yeah. That's not necessarily good development because that means they're going to turn. You have your 24 inch armament. I could try and just run up to that heavy cruiser and shotgun it in the face, but I'm not sure if that's a good idea, considering all the secondaries that that thing brings to bear. For reference, the 21-inch torpedoes on the heavy cruiser are minus 40% detectability. These are minus 65, but they're slower. So once you have them spotted, I believe you have a bit more time to respond. But I'm not 100%. Pen... Just torque my heavy cruiser. Flooding. Excellent. Try and slow this thing down. Hey, you know what? Just launch the salvo. Just throw it out there. Just make sure you do it at the same time. Otherwise, we're wasting torpedo salvos. Torps in the water. All 10. Bouquet delivered. Now hoping that the Myrdling is not... She is in a turn. Nice check. Should have checked that before. Because now this salvo is... Unless this cruiser maintains its current course, mostly harmless. Well... Maybe. These two torps were from her underwater single launchers. Let's see when she spots these. These are the new sneakies. Oh, she's been maneuvering quite a bit. They're now 1.7 out. She still has not detected them. 
One of my destroyer's guns has been destroyed. One six. Stop. Now she saw them. One five. So she's probably going to turn starboard to try and dodge. Which means that she could still park herself in harm's way. Let's come back. Yeah, I don't think she'll be connecting with those torpedoes anytime soon. No, you're fine. AP here. You just ran out of torps? That's interesting, because I still have mine. And... The question is, do they work? Yes. Yes. Okay, excellent. The guns work. Sorry, the torps work. What is that accuracy? The ship's not over there, idiot. It's over there. What the fuck are these cross-eyed gunners? Trained my ass. It just looks so stupid. Also, have these things been refit? Because I believe that they carried more torpedoes back in the day. Their light cruisers by now probably are far more of a torpedo spamming threat than these guys ever will be. Ricochet. My CAs still, still take a ton of damage from those small guns. I can only pen the superstructure, but it's just annoying. HE, pen. Pull ahead flank, catch that cruiser. If you can still catch it, that is. I want the DD to also come back. It's gonna take the DD quite a while to reload. More flooding, that's good. I need more. No, 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 not that. Hit the rudder. And damage the rudder. So with a damaged rudder, even the AI ships sometimes have some difficulty trying to get away from a torpedo. This is not working. Overpen. Do better. Ricochet. Not better. Come on. Maria Teresa, what are you doing? Ricochet overpen. Okay, back to high explosive. At least that's partial pens. But look at this. This ship is getting destroyed. By a cruiser with a couple of six-inch guns. Starboard torpedo launcher. At this rate, I'm going to have to use the destroyer to blow this thing up. Because the cruiser can't really well do it. There's the main gun. They already spotted the torps, I think. Or they just decided that this was the exact time when they wanted to change direction. Yeah, they very well know about those torps. Nice try, but uh, no joy. Maria Teresa is taking a beating from this cruiser. Six inch guns. Paper armor. My armor is far better. Yet, this thing takes so much damage. Look at that. Yes, I was a bit broadside at times, but not that much. The Generale is going to have to come in close and just shotgun this thing with 24-inch torpedoes. Which means that the Maria Teresa is going to have to draw attention to herself for even longer. That's going to be uncomfortable. 24% structural. The Myrtling is still down 75. Oh, man. I have a battlecruiser in the works. That's hopefully going to come soon. But I'm not sure yet. I don't actually think we'll see that thing come to fruition in this campaign. Stop resisting arrest. See, now they arguably can't hurt me at this point. Right? Because they got less than a percent chance to pen. Their high explosive shells can do absolutely jack shit. They're not using high explosive shells though, they're using AP, so they can't pen me, right? These shells can't pen me. Nothing should be able to kill their partial pen. Six inch partial pen. It should ricochet. I'm even bow in, ricochet angle high, 90 degrees partial pen. I swear the AI is getting some sort of 
modifier here that allows these 6 inch nonsense cruisers to just do ridiculous levels of damage even though they're not there ricochet partial pen partial pen partial pen what the fuck how am i supposed to counter this level of bullshit other than by building super ships because sure in a campaign you can build uh ships which are say i don't know four or five battleships which are just packed to the gills with guns and effectively cannot be hurt but that makes for some very boring content because you guys generally want to see difference in ships i mean you want to see cruisers you want to see light uh, cruisers you want to see destroyers you want to see battle cruisers i can do it with a couple of battleships and i have done it but it doesn't make for very interesting content as far as i'm concerned now we're about to test the modelings anti torpedo blister which is anti torp 4 and standard bulkheads so this thing is a tough cookie and it's about to take all of its 6-inch guns and start blowing away my destroyer because that's what it is exceptionally skilled at doing. And at this rate, my destroyer might not even survive. Please torp this thing with haste. Their broadside, if we launch now... Please! Yeah, the destroyer is dead. That was insane. Now, the Mödling is gonna die. But the price I paid in the form of the Maria Teresa down to 18%, sorry, 19%, and the destroyer getting curled here. Fuck off. The destroyer getting murdered by that thing? That was a bit crazy. That can get me really salty in this game. That level of stupid. Alright, what else we got? Light cruisers, Coti and Giovanni. CL, a, a DD, and a TR. Okay, fine. Let's take this one. And let's eliminate the rest of their smaller ships. Where are you people? Where are you people to the northwest? We only had so, so few ships left. One light cruiser, one destroyer. They might be building them in a frenzy. But I'm not sure. Perhaps. Even if they are, I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. They have spotted me. And there they are. Hello there, Mr. Big Torpedo Boat. Because that's essentially what they are. Coti using semi armor piercing shells. Giovanni Busan using capped ballistic shells, giving her far more pen. This is one of the upgraded light cruisers, which also come with more armor. We've got 3 inch main armor belt here. We've got 4.5 inch main armor belt there. That's another 50% bonus. So I just need to get close to these guys and engage them. Range 11 1, range 13 3 for the AP, because the AP shells are far more deadly. And there's the destroyer. There's also the transports. That's interesting. Uh, Giovanni, sadly, new ship, crewed by cadets. Hasn't had time to train yet. Range 10, 9. Okay, Coti. Here. Or rather... Yeah, that's cute. You just torpedoed me, huh? You just torped me. Can't have that. Everybody, please shoot this. Because this destroyer is kind of in my way. And even with some armor, I still don't really want to test the amount of armor that I currently have. There is the other salvo. That's the one from the light cruiser. Okay. Destroyer first. Plow through the destroyer. Just rampage through the convoy and then finish off the light. They can either sit over there and do some light shooting, or they can try and intercept. I don't think they're going to be very successful at either. What are you... Respectfully, but that's not the DD. That's the DD. That's what you're trying to shoot, but you accidentally sunk a transport. 
Imagine being so cross-eyed that you miss a destroyer. And you just hit a transport like a kilometer upstream. <laughs> and that thing dies and your original target is not. That's a bit silly. Uh, chance to pen. Pretty poor. The fuck? On a paper cruiser. Alright. Okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe this thing is too heavily angled. This light cruiser here. Planets. I've already had a title of one of my episodes called Torpedo the Planet. Um, if I say destroying the planet, maybe that's not going to go down f well with YouTube. I don't know. All right. Uh, Coty, do what you do best. Transports are yours. Light cruiser is yours. You might need to practice your dance moves there, though, uh, Giovanni. Because this thing is notorious as a torpedo spammer. It doesn't know any other way. Go T. Yeah, just go there and eliminate. Alright, buddy. Let's dance. Giovanni Busan. Against the cadet? Yeah, the cadet level crew. Interesting. I thought that'd be a bit more dangerous. Can you pen me? Yes. Can I pen you? Heck yes. Good. I don't like the range, though. Like, I don't need to get this close. They do. And, at close range, I have very little time to dodge torpedoes. Those. No, not that. Target the leopard there. Planet just launched her underwaters. Okay. So T decided apparently that targeting. Oh, never mind. I was gonna make a comment about their AP choice, but this cruiser just never got upgraded. Sadly, because I'd say she deserves an upgrade. Over pen? Our HE can't do enough. Alright. Chase the guy down. Get this. And we get this guy. Pedal, yeah. We need more. They might be preparing another torpedo launch as well. This is what I mean with practicing your dance moves, because it's probably going to send some torpedoes any minute. There we go. Oh, job done. Perfect. Transports have sunk. Koti, come back. Nice torps you got there. Wee. <laughs> Giovanni doesn't care about your torps. All right. Shall we now try to actually do damage against this guy? Other than some, <laughs> other than some very light pens, sir. Flooding. Oh. Hold on, was there one more? We didn't sink all of them? Really? No, we did. We did. It's okay. So that was uh, quite aggressive there. Is the Coty not in the way? No, the Coty's fine. Okay, good. It's been happening every now and then that I just take a little bit too much damage as I don't look what those torpedoes are going to hit next. If they miss the main target. But I mean, over pens is getting annoying. The ship has too much pen to deal with the light cruiser. But too little accuracy to do that pen damage, that pen from afar. Whereas this guy, with about less than a percent pen chance, can still do damage. Because that's how they roll. There, could you stop vaping? So I can just get some damage in. Koti, I need you over there. Go T with semi or piercing, can that do damage? No. Absolutely not. Alright, they have reloaded their underwater torpedo tubes yet again. 
These things might only be 19 inch torpedoes, but I have no torpedo blister. I have reinforced bulkheads, which is going to stop some, but not a lot. So we're going to need to do a little better. Come on. Partial pen, partial pen, partial pen. Do better! Get the damage in there. A good while later, it seems that the planet has finally had enough. The planet is taking so much damage <laughs> that she's flooding. Yeah, we can have all sorts of puns here, I suppose. Uh, so put your best pen puns down below in the comments. Anyway, this cruiser is completely screwed now. And even though it took quite a lot of hits to actually sink her, the job got done. So that's the last destroyer and the last light cruiser of the Austro-Hungarian fleet eliminated. Reducing their number to 14 ships, if I'm not mistaken. Meaning, 13 actually, because we also sunk the heavy cruiser. Meaning that they actually have fewer ships than what we started the campaign with. Despite losing so many ships, their power projection is still 20 times greater. <laughs> oh man, 20 times more than what I have. Okay, um, fortunately, Ferrari is coming out in one month with a G92. And when is that new battle cruiser expected? Eight months? Yeah. Um, hmm. Let's send some ships out there. Well, one then, I suppose. Let's also get some of the DDs here, hunting transports, uh, a slew of light cruisers deployed. We got the Aquila. More DDs. It's gonna do everything on invade so that they ideally take down as many transports and potentially even do a convoy raid as they find them. Invade does mean that they take less uh, measures to actually destroy, uh, sorry, to protect our own convoys. So maybe that's gonna come at some price, but I just wanna try and get as many ships hunted down as possible. I believe all of our heavy cruisers are currently either being refit or otherwise out of commission. Go. Alright, I think that's the entire fleet at sea. Let's see what happens. War continues. Yes, I had that idea. Um, oh dear. Oh dear. The Monarch, one of the Austro-Hungarian battle crows, uh, sorry, battleships, you know, those uh, ships which have more than 40, what is it? I think 46... Yeah, 46 to 8 inch guns. Um, one of those has come out to play. Those guns can reach pretty far. Uh, I only have the heavy cruiser Etna, but she can throw torpedoes quite far. Generale Carlo Montanari has her 24 inch torpedoes. Cannot throw torpedoes from as far away, but might be able to make something happen here. One thing I don't quite understand is that I'm meeting them here. This, I think, is either the battle or the meeting. This is the Western Mediterranean. Is it? <laughs> I don't think so. Anyway, that'll be coming up next episode. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon for the next one.